stock split is the issuance of a proportional number of additional shares for each share of stock. Think of stock splits like you're changing a $10 bill for two $5 bills. When there is a stock split, the split applies to all the shares of the affected stock, whether issued, unissued, or treasury. A stock split is useful to reduce the market price of each share of stock by making it of a smaller denomination, thereby drawing more investors to purchase shares and potentially expanding the pool of stockholders to be more diverse. Suppose that company ABC has 20,000 shares of $50 par common stock outstanding. The current market price is $100 per share. The board of directors declares a five for one stock split, which means that each share will be split into five smaller shares. As a result, the par value goes from $50 down to $10, and the number of shares goes up from 20,000 to 100,000. The total amount attributed to common stock outstanding is the same before and after the stock split. Each individual stockholder still owns the same amount of proportional ownership. Only the number of shares and the denomination of the shares has changed, but the total value remains the same. After the stock split, each share of stock trades for $20, which makes ownership in the company more accessible to those who perhaps were not willing or able to invest at least $100 to buy one of the shares before the stock split. Because stock splits only affect the number of shares outstanding and the par value, there is no need for a journal entry. However, the details of the stock split are typically disclosed on the financial statements as a note, which is sometimes also known as a memo entry. Treasury stock is stock that has been issued and then reacquired by the same corporation. When a corporation holds treasury stock, it does not pay itself a dividend. Corporations may choose to reacquire their own shares for a number of reasons, such as to reissue them later as incentive compensation to employees, or simply to generate demand for the stock in order to support the stock's market price. Treasury stock can be accounted for using the cost method or the par method. The cost method is more common. Under the cost method, the treasury stock account is debited for the purchase of the treasury stock and then credited when the treasury stock is sold. When selling treasury stock, the credit is always for the same amount as the purchase price. For example, company ABC has 10,000 shares of $10 par common stock issued and outstanding. On October 1st, the corporation purchases 1,000 shares of its own common stock at $25 per share. The journal entry would require a $25,000 debit to treasury stock and a $25,000 credit to cash. Suppose that on November 1st, the corporation sells 700 shares of the treasury stock for $35. A journal entry is made to record the sale. Clearly, cash would go up with a debit by $24,500. Treasury stock is then reversed to the extent of 700 shares at the price paid for those shares, $25. What if treasury stock sells at a price below what the company previously paid? Suppose that the company sells the remaining 300 treasury shares for $20. Clearly, cash would go up with a debit by $6,000. Treasury stock is then reversed to the extent of 300 shares at the price paid for those shares, $25. The result is a credit to treasury stock of $7,500. The remaining portion, a debit, is essentially a loss on the sale. To the extent that the account called paid in capital from the sale of treasury stock has a positive balance, that loss is debited against that account. If that account had a zero balance, that loss would be debited against retained earnings.